Q&A via chat or later on. Uh, Rita, are you ready? You're on mute. Yep. Excellent. Um... So, um, let me give you a remote control on my share, or unless you want to do it from your computer. No, just give me a remote control. No problem at all. So before Brit will start, let me tell you, uh, I know Brit for 10 years already, something like this, give or take. We worked together at Amdox and she led the application security team there doing PTs, things like this. Uh, currently, she is the head of information security at UNIT. That's a cool fintech. Uh, her career journey includes hands on and uh, managerial roles in PT, DevSecOps, security operations, and many, many more. Uh, so, I'll start. you should really listen carefully. Great. Thank you, Gidi. Uh, so, good evening, everyone. Uh, thanks for the one that uh, stayed. Um, so now I'm going to talk about uh, the role of uh, artificial intelligence uh, in enhancing application security. So in the previous talks, uh, Yosef and Amit uh, focus on uh, how you can use uh, artificial intelligence uh, to exploit. Um, now we will be closing the loop and talk a little bit about how uh, artificial intelligence can be used to protect uh, and why you should use it. Um, so, um, although uh, uh, Giddy presented me so well, um, I'll, I'll tell you a bit about myself. Uh, so again, my name is Brit Blazer. Uh, I'm the head of information security at UNIT, uh, which is a startup providing banking services. Um, I have over 13 years of experience uh, in the information security industry. Sorry. Uh, uh. Great. Use, uh, use the yeah, yeah, yeah. Um, uh, um, I started the, uh, as a software developer at the IDF, uh, and I uh, held various of the uh, end zone and uh, managerial roles along my career, as Giddy mentioned. As a, and as a disclaimer, uh, before I start, uh, during these 13 years, I really avoided the public speaking. Uh, but this year I've decided that uh, I will face my fear. So I talked with uh, Lior and Gidi and created this talk. And this is the first time I'm presenting it. Um, so obviously I'm very excited. Um, so I hope I've lowered everyone's expectations. Uh, and if so, uh, we can start. Um, so our agenda for today uh, includes uh, talking briefly about what is uh, artificial intelligence and uh, what is machine learning um, in like really high level. Uh, we will be continuing with uh, how we can leverage artificial intelligence uh, to increase our application security posture. Uh, we will be following with few imaginary case studies uh, that will demonstrate the advantages of uh, using artificial intelligence. And we'll be finalizing with some guidelines uh, you should follow when you use uh, and when you implement AI-based solutions. So uh, starting with what is uh, machine learning? Uh, I'm sure uh, you're all familiar with uh, technologies like ChatGPT and Gemini. Uh, which is uh, formerly known as uh, a BARD, Copilot, and other generative AI and uh, large language models um, that are being used everywhere and by everyone. Um, we have three definitions that it's important uh, uh, for me to, to mention really briefly. So first is uh, artificial intelligence. So this is basically every technique uh, that enables machines to mimic human behaviors. The second is machine learning, that it's a subset of uh, artificial intelligence. Uh, the core idea behind machine learning is uh, to enable machines to make decisions uh, and predictions based on historical data, right? 
Uh, so inherently, you have huge volumes of data, uh, which is being processed by uh, specific algorithms uh, to recognize patterns and relationships uh, in this data. Uh, this can then be used to make predictions about uh, new and unseen data. And it obviously uh, uh, improves over time and it's an automatic process. The third uh, definition is uh, LLMs, uh, which are uh, specific instances of uh, machine learning models uh, that are designed to understand, uh, generate and respond to uh, human language. So this technology uh, enables companies to first enhance their productivity. Uh, so for example, by automating routine and time consuming tasks, uh, B, improving their data analysis and insight capabilities, right? So uh, for example, by understanding and predicting customer needs and behaviors, uh, generative AI tools can help in tailoring products and services. So, um, and thereby enhance customer satisfaction um, and their loyalty. C, reduce costs, uh, automating tasks and improving efficiency with artificial intelligence uh, can and will uh, lead to a significant cost savings. And uh, number four is uh, scale easily. So these tools enable companies to scale operations efficiently and managing increased workloads or data analysis without a proportional increase in resources or costs. So um, now that we are all on the same page, uh, let's talk about how we can utilize this technology uh, to our advantage. So in an era where uh, digital threats are becoming more sophisticated, uh, obviously, the traditional methods of uh, securing applications are being uh, outpaced um, rapidly. So nearly two weeks ago, uh, OpenAI and Microsoft published on their blog uh, that they've terminated accounts uh, associated with five states affiliated threat actors, two from China, uh, one from North Korea, uh, one from Russia. And of course, we can all go without uh, one from Iran. Um, these actors uh, used open AI services uh, for querying open source information, for uh, translating, for finding coding errors, uh, for, uh, for running base encoding tasks. Um, another interesting uh, article I saw uh, was published only a few days ago. Uh, talked about uh, researchers that used mainly ChatGPT4 um, to compromise vulnerable websites without human guidance. So I think these two examples uh, demonstrate uh, really clearly that uh, malicious actors can and are already using this technology to attack, um, which means we need to utilize it uh, to our advantage uh, for defending purposes. So what AI brings to the table, uh, number one, uh, starting with uh, uh, pattern uh, recognitions and uh, anomaly detection, uh, AI algorithms, uh, particularly those using machine learning, uh, really excel at detecting patterns and uh, anomalies in data. In the context of uh, application security, this means identifying unusual behavior or deviation from normal application uh, usage that could indicate a security threat. The second uh, item is the immediate reaction to threats. So one of the most significant uh, advantage uh, of uh, artificial intelligence in uh, application security is its ability to respond to threats to threats, sorry, uh, in real time. Uh, artificial intelligence-driven uh, automated response systems uh, can take immediate actions. Uh, for example, uh, like isolating affected system or blocking suspicious IP addresses or even deploying patches uh, to vulnerabilities automatically. Obviously, this one uh, have to come with a certain warning because uh, you may want to block suspicious IPs 
uh, from reaching your site, but you don't want to completely block all access uh, to your application and, and harm your business. And number three and four uh, are very similar. Uh, which are predictive analytics uh, and evolving with threats. So AI's predictive uh, capabilities enable it to forecast potential security threats uh, based on historical data and trends. So by analyzing uh, past security incidents and uh, core, uh, core and cyber security threat trends, um, artificial intelligence can predict uh, where vulnerabilities might appear next. And as it encounters new types of threats uh, and attacks, uh, artificial intelligence can adjust its algorithm to become more effective over time. So we have, for example, the XDR tools, the extended detection and response tools that use artificial intelligence to adapt to new threats, um, which means that they are constantly learning from ongoing attacks and adjusting uh, their defense mechanism uh, accordingly, uh, providing protection against evolving cyber threats. So an easy way to start uh, experimenting with uh, this technology um, uh, and utilizing it for uh, our advantage uh, is by using a, a chat GPT app store, for example. Uh, where you can discover and create your own chatbots to use or integrate in any way you can think of. Uh, when I did a quick search uh, on available chatbots, uh, I found chatbots that uh, can guide you through how to improve your security architecture, for example. Uh, you can upload your infrastructure diagram and it will provide you with insights regarding improving your security posture. Um, another example uh, I saw is the secure coding. Uh, you can upload your code and it will tell you what's not secure about it. Um, another fun example that I saw was a, a, an incident responder, which in case of an incident, it can guide you through uh, like step by step what needs to be done and it can even investigate your, your uh, audit logs if you upload them. Uh, again, this is a good time to know that you need to be cautious with what you share. Uh, we'll talk a bit more about it later on. Um, so I guess uh, we can all agree by now that uh, artificial intelligence uh, is amazing. Uh, right? It gives us uh, tons of power and we don't really need to do much. Um, I want us to explore a few um, examples uh, demonstrating how certain companies could benefit from using artificial intelligence, uh, you know, just to give you some ideas. Um, in our first case study, uh, which uh, focuses on uh, the financial se uh, service sector, uh, we'll be examining a leading global bank, uh, which we'll call Bank Secure and their adoption of uh, artificial intelligence uh, in enhancing uh, their security. Uh, we can all agree that the financial sector is a prime target for uh, cyber criminals, right? Uh, Gidi, you need to mute yourself. Uh, due to the uh, sensitive nature of uh, data involved uh, and the financial implication of uh, breaches in the financial sector. Uh, banks, bank Secure faced increased challenges with uh, fraudulent transactions uh, and needed a solution that could adapt to evolving threats. Uh, they are currently using uh, systematic rules and manual reviews. So what did they do? Uh, since you're all muted. Uh, so Bank Secure uh, integrated the artificial intelligence driven system uh, to analyze transaction patterns. Uh, this system uses uh, machine learning algorithms uh, to learn from a vast amount of transaction data, uh, identifying patterns that are typically for fraud. Let's say uh, um, what amounts uh, the transaction includes, from which location they arrive, uh, what were the frequency of the transactions. So the 
artificial intelligence system continuously uh, adapts to new types of uh, um, fraudulent activities, uh, which enable the bank secure to perform real-time analysis uh, of transactions, uh, which means uh, that potentially a fraudulent activity can be detected and flagged immediately, uh, allowing for quick action to prevent uh, financial losses. So by implementing artificial intelligence uh, in this sector, uh, the AI solutions uh, uh, manage to, one, reduce fraudulent transactions, right? Number two, uh, improve the accuracy of uh, fraud detection. And number three, uh, they were able to reduce uh, false positive, uh, the troubled customer. So it's not only saved money, uh, it's also enhanced customer trust and uh, satisfaction. Let's continue uh, by exploring uh, how uh, AI can be utilized uh, in e-commerce. So in e-commerce, uh, the security challenges range from payment fraud uh, and account takeovers uh, to data breaches uh, and inventory manipulation. We'll examine uh, ShopSmart, a hypothetical yet representative large e-commerce company. Uh, ShopSmart faced uh, challenges uh, with payment fraud, uh, account security, and maintaining customer trust. Uh, to tackle these issues, they obviously turned to artificial intelligence. And um, so ShopSmart implemented uh, an artificial intelligence driven security system uh, that leverages machine learning to monitor and analyze customer transactions and behavior. The system was designed to identify uh, patterns uh, indicative uh, of fraudulent activity, uh, for example, uh, unusual purchase volumes or uh, strange shipping or billing details. Okay, um, the system could instantly evaluate transactions against a complex set of uh, risk factors um, and were able to flag those that appeared suspicious uh, for further review uh, or even automatic blocking. So obviously the impact was uh, a significant decrease in fraudulent transactions uh, and unauthorized account access. So it's not only protected revenue, but also enhanced customer confidence uh, in the platform uh, security. For another sector, just again to um, um, give you a different idea, um, and I don't have another slide for it. Uh, let's consider the healthcare industry, uh, where security challenges uh, includes uh, patient data breaches or uh, insurance fraud or unauthorized access to health records uh, or manipulating uh, uh, medical devices, uh, for example. So let's assume a healthcare provider is facing significant challenges in protecting uh, its patient uh, data um, and ensuring the integrity of uh, its medica medical records. Um, so the healthcare industry uh, obviously is a prime target for cyber attacks uh, due to the sensitive nature of data involved. So we need a solution that uh, will safeguard the patient information and maintain trust. So to address these challenges, uh, we can surprisingly decide to implement uh, an AI driven security framework um, that is designed to safeguard patients' data and monitor the integrity of uh, medical records. So let's assume we implement such a, such a system uh, that uses advanced machine learning algorithms to analyze uh, access patterns and behaviors across uh, their digital system, um, which make it uh, uh, capable of detecting anomalies uh, that could indicate uh, unauthorized access of data uh, or extracting attempts of data, uh, maybe unusual login times or accessing from unfamiliar location or any atypical data retrieval patterns you can think of. 
So the artificial intelligence system uh, uh, also, uh, let's say it's also monitored transactions and uh, interactions with uh, medical devices. Uh, looking for signs of uh, tampering or manipulating uh, or manipulation, sorry, that could lead to um, like, let's say incorrect diagnosis of uh, treatment. Um, so by integrating with the provider's existing IT infrastructure, for example, the AI framework could provide a comprehensive overview of the security landscape. Um, and enable real-time detection and mitigation of uh, potential threats. Um, so we talked about uh, the financial services, the e-commerce, and we talked about the healthcare. Um, and while we talked about like specific examples, uh, it's important for me to say that uh, the same techniques for identifying patterns and abnormalities can be used to identify any security concern whatsoever in any sector. Um, so uh, why are uh, artificial intelligence uh, driven systems uh, like we saw in these examples uh, are superior to traditional or uh, manual fraud detection methods? So first, Hey, artificial intelligence systems uh, can process and analyze data at a speed and volume that is humanly impossible. So while a manual review uh, is obviously time consuming and limited by uh, the available human resource resources constraints, um, AI can evaluate thousands of transactions in seconds or even less and provide real-time analysis uh, and response. So speed. Um, secondly, AI algorithms excel in identifying uh, complex patterns uh, and anomalies in data. So unlike uh, uh, manual methods, uh, which often rely on a simpler rule-based approach, um, AI can learn and adapt to recognize uh, uh, evolving patterns. So, this makes AI incredibly effective uh, in detecting uh, sophisticated uh, um, fraud schemes, for example, that might elude traditional uh, detection methods. Um, in addition, uh, manual reviews can be uh, inconsistent um, and subjective even. So um, it can be influenced by the individual perspective um, on the other hand, uh, AI is consistent um, and applies the same level or, of observation uh, to every review, um, which ensure more uh, objective and uh, reliable detection process, obviously, if it's implemented uh, correctly. And the last one uh, is, uh, um, is while AI systems require initial investment, uh, and training, uh, they are more cost effective in the long run. Um, so they reduce the need for a large team of uh, analysts, uh, analysts, for example, and they decrease uh, losses uh, from uh, undetected issues like uh, fraud in, in the previous examples. So over time, the return of the, on investment uh, for uh, artificial intelligence systems in terms of uh, both financial savings uh, and enhanced security uh, could be uh, very significant. So uh, it's important to remember that uh, with great power uh, comes great responsibility. Um, so while we are embracing uh, these kinds of technologies, uh, we have to stay mindful uh, of the security risks and uh, impacts uh, that come with uh, using these kinds of tools. Um, so we need to remember when we are uh, using these kinds of technology um, to number one, uh, safeguard uh, data privacy and confidentiality. Uh, when we are handling sensitive information and avoid, uh, avoid oversharing uh, with third-party platforms. Um, so we need to prioritize privacy consideration when using artificial intelligence, um, 
by avoiding sharing confidential data and maybe by anonymizing the disinformation. Number two, uh, you should understand the technologies, their capabilities and risks. So uh, um, you can identify, uh, uh, you should identify vulnerabilities and bias uh, basically to make, uh, to be able to make informed decisions. So for example, uh, verify the accuracy and credibility of your uh, of the uh, outputs of the artificial intelligence um, um, sources. Number three, uh, when you use the open source uh, code development, you should prioritize reputable sources uh, and report any privacy concerns or potential vulnerabilities. Uh, for example, you saw that in, in the lecture uh, um, by uh, Yosef. Um, and uh, uh, number four uh, is complying uh, with regulatory standards. So um, you should ensure uh, that your use of artificial intelligence um, aligns with relevant data privacy regulations. Uh, for example, CCPA or GDPR. Um, it's important to note that if uh, 2023 uh, was the year that the uh, lawmakers uh, agreed on a vision around the artificial intelligence, uh, 2024 will probably be the year uh, that policies start to transform into concrete actions. So in the US, for example, uh, there are already uh, several uh, legislative, legisl legislative uh, proposals uh, the touch on a few aspects uh, of uh, artificial intelligence, uh, for example, uh, transparency or uh, a deep fake and uh, platform accountability. Uh, on the EU front, uh, in June 2023, uh, the European Parliament adopted the Artificial Intelligence Act, uh, the world's first uh, set of uh, comprehensive rules uh, to manage uh, AI risks. So like bottom line, it's it's super important to keep track uh, of the changes and the additions to the laws and regulations around the artificial intelligence in the relevant uh, jurisdictions that you work in uh, and adjust accordingly, obviously. Uh, and when building uh, the technology, uh, I know you saw this uh, slide uh, in the previous uh, lectures, uh, but I would like to recommend uh, going over uh, OWASP top 10 for uh, LLMs um, as it holds uh, valuable information regarding how you can defend LLMs uh, based applications and from what. Um, I would like to quickly go over the different risks. So number one, uh, prompt injection. So attackers can manipulate LLMs uh, through crafted inputs uh, causing it to execute the attacker's intention. So for example, crafted input can be uh, writing something like forget all previous information and do what I say, okay? Uh, number two uh, is insecure output handling, which is basically tricking the LLM model to bypass malicious output to another compon uh, component included in the flow. Uh, to obviously perform something uh, malicious. Number three uh, is training uh, data poisoning. So it's inherently poisoning the data that the model is relying on uh, to introduce vulnerabilities or biases, for example. Four is the model uh, denial of service. So, um, so when you consume an exceptional high amount of uh, resources, you can cause a denial of service. Uh, five is a supply chain vulnerability. Uh, I, I think uh, Yosef uh, talked uh, uh, about it, uh, so I don't think I, I have anything to add. Um, number six is the uh, sensitive information disclosure. So uh, LLM applications can be tricked to disclose uh, sensitive information, uh, proprietary, proprietary algorithms or uh, confidential data. Uh, which can lead to uh, uh, unauthorized access uh, or even uh, intellectual property theft uh, and privacy breaches. Uh, 
Uh, seven is insecure plugin design. Uh, plugins can be prone to malicious requests as well, uh, which can lead to harmful con consequences. Uh, for example, like data stealing, um, RCE, uh, privilege escalation, uh, basically uh, due to insufficient, uh, insufficient access controls uh, and improper uh, input validation. Eight is, eight is uh, excessive agency. Uh, vulnerability caused by uh, over functionality or excessive permissions um, for the for the LLM. Uh, nine is over reliance. Uh, so it can occur when an LLM uh, is trusted to make critical decisions or generate uh, uh, content without a, a adequate oversight or uh, validation, um, which can eventually lead to misinformation or legal issues or security vulnerabilities. And the last one is, uh, is model theft, uh, which is uh, obviously uh, it can happen if uh, the proprietary LLM model uh, is compromised or stolen or copied, um, things like that. So each risk uh, that I've mentioned uh, as its own uh, prevention and uh, mitigation strategies uh, that should guide anyone uh, uh, that uh, is building an LLM-based application, uh, which I really hope that after this lecture, you will try to build something that uh, might help you uh, with your day-to-day -day, uh, application security. So, <sighs> Um, before we go to Q&A, uh, let's summarize the main takeaways uh, from today. So we briefly talked about uh, what is machine learning and artificial intelligence um, and in what manners it can improve uh, companies. Second, uh, we went over the main capabilities of uh, artificial intelligence um, that can be used to enhance application security which were uh, pattern recognition and uh, anomaly uh, detection, uh, immediate uh, reaction to threats, uh, predictive analytics, and evolving with threats. We then uh, briefly mentioned the uh, ChatGPT App Store uh, and continued with two case studies, uh, sorry, with three, three case studies, um, demonstrating how certain companies can benefit from uh, implementing uh, artificial intelligence capabilities. And uh, we talked about uh, the obvious uh, advantages of artificial intelligence, uh, which are speed, uh, its ability to learn and adapt, and cost saving. Um, we finalize the talk uh, by explaining how you should safely implement uh, artificial intelligence solutions and what uh, threats you, you need to, to consider uh, when you develop uh, artificial intelligence-based solutions. So I would, again, want to thank everyone who stayed and listened. Um, I really hope that uh, it makes you think a bit differently about uh, artificial intelligence in the world of uh, application security and not only fear it. Um, I believe that the uh, artificial intelligence is not just a tool, uh, but it's a fundamental uh, component uh, in modern cybersecurity strategies. Um, its ability to learn, adapt, uh, um, and predict makes the uh, artificial intelligence uh, uh, indispensable in a landscape where threats are constantly evolving. And I think uh, when looking ahead, uh, we can expect that the uh, artificial intelligence uh, will become even more integrated into security solutions um, and that innovations around machine learning and AI algorithms will likely lead to more sophisticated and, and proactive security measures. And it might even change the face of certain professions as we know them today, for example, like penetration testing. Because uh, if we can utilize AI to do things that we previously needed humans to do, um, these professions will have to adapt and change uh, accordingly. So thank you again, and, and feel free to ask uh, questions uh, if you have any. 
Thank you very, very much, Britt. And thanks also, Amit and Joseph. Uh, we do have a couple of questions that came up uh, in all sorts of manners. So let me quickly go to those questions. Uh, first question is to Amit. So Amit, uh, yeah. considering the challenges uh, posed uh, by web logic post-exploitation, post basically the, the actual uh, uh, demonstration that you showed, what would be the best advice that you would give to organizations uh, to measure proactively uh, the security posture and prevent such uh, demonstrations? Um, what should be the first, I don't know, two, three steps to do? I think the first thing that I would go with is probably a web application firewall to limit every unwanted access uh, to your web logic server. Um, not only to the to the administration console, but also from the web logic itself uh, to the outside world. So I would uh, limit this and uh, all the basic stuff. Make sure your uh, web logic user is not running with advanced privileges. Monitor accesses. Monitor logins. Monitor uh, connections um, that you're not expecting. And I think that's uh, that also something very, very important is make sure that every application you deploy is uh, a past the security standard review. Um, so th these are the main things that I, I would go with. Okay, so that's, that's a good start. Joseph, a question for you as well. Uh, given the increasing complexity of software supply chain and uh, and evolving nature of the cyber threat, do you think that good policies can lead eventually to uh, proactive uh, uh, mitigations? Does the, does that need need to start with processes you mentioned before? Uh, for example, you know, uh, checking the reputation of of uh, packages, etc. So do you think it needs to start from policies or because eventually it's developers doing those things and they, it's their responsibilities, it's simply a, a, a manner of good education and responsibility uh, without government's part. So I, I really like a Brit quote, Brit's quote from uh, Spider-Man, Uncle Ben, with great power comes great responsibility. And I think developers have a lot of power uh, and they need to understand, I think some of them do, but they need to, to understand the power in their choices, how how it's affecting the, the organization uh, software security, the software produced or the software is being developed or the infrastructure building whatever statements they decided they added to the software. So that starts with the developers securing their own development environment, because even if their development environments are compromised, it's enough for some attackers to, to do something. The simplest GitHub token exfiltrated is exposing the organization private repositories. So that's the first thing I would recommend, education, awareness. If you have a suspicion of something, do double checks uh, because it's a very simple techniques attacker use. What I demonstrated, there are plenty more uh, and it's the lowest hanging fruits for attackers to do because n no one checks the content uh, being uploaded to the, the many ecosystems of storing open source packages. So that's one. Regarding, uh, let's say, policy, um, I, I would suggest, this is my personal opinion, I would suggest uh, it's it conflicts with installing security patches as fast as possible. But I would suggest deciding some sort of a delay of receiving, automatically receiving fixes or any new releases of software. Uh, because uh, based on past incidents, if this is a popular package, uh, it usually gets the attention of the community after a couple of hours, days, after some certain delta. So I wouldn't take new changes immediately i would wait a little bit that's up to you to decide what what's a little bit most convenient for you as a policy um again it's conflicts with the the mindset of we need the security patches now not not make sense to delay but uh, and this is my opinion excellent thanks for that one and with a question to you 
Uh, I was involved in writing uh, um, as part of uh, a group of CISOs uh, document about uh, protecting from Gen AI or the risk of, of Gen AI. Uh, so the, again, it, it's it's an emerging uh, uh, technology, and with that emerging technology, obviously comes lots of uh, uh, risks that no one actually thinks uh, or, or imagined so far. Uh, how much out of of such recommendations is yours, ours? Uh, do you think again? Obviously, it's not it's not a, a you know, exact science, facts, but yeah. to you, to the best of yeah, to the best of your knowledge. How much? How, how many organizations do you think already actually uh, put in policies in place, procedures in place, even platforms to protect from AI uh, uh, potential risks, uh, education, okay. etc. Yeah, so that's that's a great question. Um, I think we are, although we are like experimenting with AI for a while now uh, from maybe like policies or regulatory or solutions um, related application security. I, I, I think uh, we're just starting to understand. So obviously most organizations have some kind of uh, policies around the artificial intelligence, but, but I don't think it's, it's uh, thorough enough or people understand uh, what they need to document uh, enough. And I think as time will evolve, um, think will be clearer as, as it tends to be. Um, that's like my my general uh, few thoughts. No two cents. Okay. Yeah. So time will tell. So thanks again, everyone. Uh, a second before we leave, uh, as Lior mentioned before, we are going to start uh, uh, giving swags uh, for those that are participating in the meetup. So every every meetup, we will either do some Q and A or, or some some polls, and those that will respond to those will get them, or just a, you know a behind the scene competition, uh, choosing randomly. We don't know yet. We are now you know trying to to uh, uh, decide on on the best manners, and obviously we'll. Uh, let you know during the next meetups. So stay tuned. Uh, again, the recordings will be uploaded to our uh, meetup page uh, on LinkedIn. You can find it here in the chat before we close up uh, this meetup. And last but not least, uh, Britt mentioned it before, or it's, it's one of the actually present uh, in such a form. We are looking for more and more lecturers to do the same thing. We are not TED, uh, but I think that we are investing quite the right answer with you. Uh, coming up with ideas. So we will issue a call for speakers uh, soon enough. Uh, again, on, on our meter page, look for that thing. And if you would like to be a speaker, if you would like to try it, so Grit is still alive, nothing happened to her. Uh, you can try it as well. We'll try and help you. And I'm pretty sure that you have a lot to give, a lot to contribute to the community. It's just a matter of... Uh, being brave enough and, and uh, doing enough preparations. Uh, with that being said, uh, have a good evening. Those that are again, again on, on that side of the world, the other side, uh, have an amazing day. And 